Hello, this is saxophonist Antonio Parker, and this is a conversation in jazz, where we are promoting jazz through telling the stories. Today, we are presenting part one of our two-part interview with the wonderful drummer and band leader, Mr. Howard Kingfish Franklin. We ask you to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so we can let you know when we are posting another video or going live. We also ask you to donate to our Cash App in order to support the channel and help us to produce future videos. Our Cash App is dollar sign Jazzology 101. That's dollar sign Jazzology 101. Enjoy the video. Hi, this is saxophonist Antonio Parker, and this is a conversation in jazz. Today, I'm honored to have a good brother, friend, and musical colleague. He is an accomplished drummer, band leader, educator, and the owner of Howard Franklin Music. Please welcome my good brother, Mr. Howard Kingfish Franklin. <laughs> Thank What's you. up, my brother? <laughs> hey, oh, man, brother, how you doing? Good, man. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for yeah. having me. Yeah, man. So what we do here is we just learn your story, the story behind the story. You know, we've known each other, man, I think uh, 30 years or more. Easy 30 years. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember how we met? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but 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 I did meet you. Um, I want to say around 80, 88, 89. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you had been here previously. I remember you came yeah. over to yeah. Howard in eighty seven. Yeah, yeah I came. Yep. You know, I it could have been, been, been at it could have been at Twins. UDC, you you at UDC? Thing, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, it could have been same time. It, we could have met at Twins. At the uh, they used to have the uh, Martin Luther King celebrations at Blackbird. Blackbird absolutely, absolutely. Where everybody. All the musicians were coming. Well, I used to see you also too with uh, when uh, you know we did the uh, Battle of the Bands, the Big Bands. Yeah, the uh, Big Band Festival. Yeah. My mentor Calvin Jones yeah. had, yeah, that's, you know, yeah. had the festival for yeah, us. No doubt. Howard University, yeah, University of Maryland, yeah, of course, the University of Disco Disco no, of Columbia, yeah. which you know, you know, what was cool about that time, man, is that although we were all learning how to get our thing together, man, and we went to different schools, mm -hmm. but we would meet and man, it'd be brotherhood. Oh man, you definitely. know what I'm saying. It's yeah. a fraternity within the you know yeah. itself. You know, and you know, so but we're gonna we're gonna get it. And into, then I would come over there to the punch out and yeah, Howard we had to, and yeah, 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 man. Do gigs with all the <laughs> y'all bad Howard cats, man. That was those yeah, that was days, good, yeah. man. I was just trying to get my feet wet, you know. Oh man. So, um one thing I always liked about you, man, like like me, you always smile. You know, brothers coming up in the hood, you know, you see them always gritting. Yeah. But it's good to see another a brother smiling. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And we absolutely. had that. You had a great. You have always had this great, great spirit. Absolutely. Thank and, you. Uh, and uh, and 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 one thing you know about people that smile, mm. don't get it twisted. <laughs> there's a this this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't yeah. don't get on the don't get on the other side of that smile. Well, people people that know me know yeah. I have two sides. Yeah yeah yeah. I, I can I can sense it when I see people. And you just, yeah. you know, okay, don't get it twisted. I'll smile and yeah. smack your yeah. head off. Yeah, yeah. Later, right? <laughs> but I'm nice. Yeah. yeah. So in that in that note, man, my first question, because okay. I want to get to know some things about you I don't know. Okay. So who is Howard Franklin? <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's a vast question. Yeah. <laughs> so Howard Franklin is, I'm just a regular guy. I love to play the music. I love to play the drums. Yeah. I love to play the drums. Uh, you know, like one of my heroes, Elvin Jones, would say, he said, I just love to play the drums. That's what I love to do. And, you know, uh, this music has, has given me uh, opportunities and it has, it has afforded me to uh, travel throughout the world, wow. uh, meet thousands and thousands of people. Um, and give me that's that's like a vacation to me. So free vacations, a get while paid, that, a, get, get, get paid, get paid, and, <laughs> you know, and give me the opportunity to hear all these 
different languages in different com- countries yeah. and um and just giving me so much life I can't imagine a life without being a musician um yeah so you know I'm a I'm a father a yeah. brother a friend yeah. an uncle a cousin yeah uh yeah, all, all you know, that, all, that all, stuff. all of that stuff, and I got my, I have my own business. You know, yeah. I just you, you know, forgot do events. You, I, I'm surprised you forgot the, the, uh, the. I ain't gonna say the most important part one, but when you see Howard Franklin, you see DC. <laughs> 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 you straight up. This yeah. is straight up. So yeah. you, are, you're a Washingtonian. Yeah, Washingtonian man, and you know, I, uh, you know, Maryland too, man. You know, I'm Maryland aunties. I okay. always say I'm. Maryland. I'm the MD. Yeah, got I'm Maryland and DC. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. No both lived in both half my life, half yeah. over here, half over here. Matter of fact, I lived in DC longer than Maryland, but yeah, you know, Maryland I represent. Yeah, that's my you, that's my home uh, state. What's your what's your, what's your uh, sports teams? All all area teams. Yeah. Every team, Washington Redskins. <laughs> yeah, you're passionate. Yeah, I still I'm yeah. still Redskins. So yeah, yeah. you know, no doubt. Uh, Nationals, <laughs> Capitals, Wizards. You know, although DC I did, United, although Mystics. I did, I although I did see you one time when uh when uh Baltimore Ravens was ah! I saw you with the, <laughs> I saw you put on a, a Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, so that was kind of a um <laughs> so that was kind of twofold. So I kinda of lost a bet on that one. Okay. So well well they said Baltimore had gotten to the Super Bowl, I had to wear a Ravens jersey. Gotcha. Um Seeing as though Baltimore's in the state of Maryland, yeah, to I was yeah. like, okay, yeah. I, it, it ain't gonna kill me. Yeah. I mean, no I like the Ravens. I root for them. You know, yeah. when they're not playing us, watch it. I mean, it's like my second team, yeah, because it's in the state of Maryland. It's but high. it's kind of like I root for them, but you're not gonna catch me wearing a Ravens jersey like <laughs> yeah. a regular day. Gotcha. Plus Steve McNair, who I Really loved the quarterback. Mm-hmm. I, that's who was jersey I had on. Okay, you know he yeah, was yeah. tragically murdered years yeah, ago. Yeah, and I uh, really had a love for that that brother. Um, thought he was a game changer at the quarterback position, especially mm-hmm. for young uh, black men. Especially he was an inspiration yeah. to us all. And he was an HBCU guy. So okay, that's what's up. Yeah, Alcorn yeah. State. So nothing but love for no HBCUs. Doubt. No doubt. <laughs> so how'd you get the name Kingfish? So the name Kingfish was given to me by my mentor, uh, uh, Calvin Jones, who was my professor, teacher, yours too. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, no doubt. We're going to talk. At, we gonna, at the gonna, University gonna, of yeah. Disc of Columbia, uh, Cal, Calvin Jones is what made me. So put it this way. I, 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 I love the music, but Calvin Jones made me fall in love with the music. See, that's okay. different. So he That's gave you the name. Love, yeah, he gave you the a name. Different Kingfish. level of love, and then he would later name me Kingfish. Once I started establishing myself on the drums, see, see, Calvin Jones is not going to give you a name if you're not playing with Diddley Squad, as he say. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. You know, okay. he would, he would, he he named you once you started playing on the level that he felt uh-huh. was, you know, they deemed you a nickname. Yeah, you know, and once it's, he, once it, that. He gave me that kingfish, and, yeah. and then I. The the irony is, you know, there's people around the world in the music scene. Everything do not know my real, my birth name, but they know kingfish. It's <laughs> yeah. a fish, fish, yeah. kingfish. Yeah, we call, call you. Brother. I call you fish. I've been overseas, yeah. brother. Kingfish. I really? Know, I don't know. You know they see they. <laughs> Wow. And, and then, really? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, that's I've it. been in four countries. Yeah, somebody fish, fish, wow. kingfish. Ah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Man. So it's easy for them to remember yeah. versus Howard Franklin Jr. It's just they plus just, plus musicians always get these nicknames anyway. Absolutely, you know we, and we, yeah. we and it's always a story. So yeah. Kingfish was a character on Amos and Andy, uh, the black exploitation uh, TV series that was back in the day, way before my time. My mm-hmm. father used to watch that show, of course. Um, told me about. It. He said Kingfish was kind of like a, a, a funny guy, kind of like a slickster. Yeah. But still kind of cool, and yeah. everybody listened to him. Uh-huh. And he, you know, he, you know, he was just that guy. You know, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, like everybody kind of, kind of got around him, kind of like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Father God. Now, appreciate you, I was it. reading something where you said uh, Steve Williams took that name and, 
and, and took it somewhere else. What, what, oh, what did he man. call it? <laughs> Steve Williams, drummer Steve not Williams. just Steve Drummer, yeah. famous drummer Steve Williams. You guys know Steve Williams from playing with the great Shirley Horn, uh-huh. uh, the all yeah. DC cast, you know, and my big brother, you uh-huh. know, one of my big brothers, and started calling me Fish Sticks. He called you Fish. <laughs> Oh, man. He called you fish sticks? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, fish. And then I got fish, fish fry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Tim, Tim Warfield started calling me swing fish. <laughs> wow. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Thank you. You know, because cool, I'm man. like, you know, yeah. humbling, yeah, man. man. It's just that Beautiful. cats feel, you know, yeah. Yeah. just comfortable with you just yeah, to, man. you know, and tell you, tell you, not call you names like that. And with Gerald Pennington, my big bro, uh-huh. Trump and the trombone, great cat. Uh, same yeah. thing. He swing fish, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, they kind of mix it all up, stuff yeah. like that. And then uh, the irony was, so everybody knows when I was finishing up school, you know, I started bringing my son. Okay. You know, now he's wow. twenty nine now, so oh, wow. yeah, my oldest son, wow. my son Brandon, and he would come to school with me. So they start calling him Tadpole. <laughs> They start calling him Guppy. Oh man, that's funny. No, they called him Guppy, <laughs> Tadpole, oh, that's Sardines. Cool. Oh man. So a small teeny fish. Yeah. As, yeah. As like to say, yeah, well, that's, that's your daddy's king yeah. fish. You you're yeah. a little fish. He's a big fish, you yeah. know. Cause I used that to drag him around with me all the time. I remember, yeah, yeah. And man. uh he come to class with me, man. He he was born at UDC, man. He was just like yeah. he was part. I mean he Grew up there, yeah. you know. He was born there, and grew up there. No doubt. So, yeah, I mean, you had to do what you had to do. Oh yeah, I got to carry my son around, man. Yeah, man. So, so um, you said you grew up in Washington D.C. and Maryland. What was mm. it like in D.C.? What part of D.C. did you grow up in? Well, so I grew up in Maryland mostly. Okay. Uh, and D.C. Okay. So I always I. So you were we born kinda, in Maryland? Well, yeah. So we were born. We kind of moved around a different places in mm-hmm. the metropolitan area and uh-huh. just DC and Maryland. So it's like, you know, you know, between those two I moved around different places. Um so a lot different I man, people say, damn, you lived everywhere. <laughs> and I did, you know, you know, you know how it is back in the day, seventies and you know, my parents was going through different things and you know, we go over here, stay with my aunt a little bit, yeah, go yeah, over here, yeah. stay with my Cousin, mm-hmm. you know, just moving yeah. around or whatever. You, you know, you kind of move around, and my dad over here, my mom over here, so, and back yeah. together. So you ever live in Southeast DC? Absolutely. Because when I came, when I came in '87, yeah, DC was called the, the you know, the what capital? Simple City, yeah, uh, yeah. murder capital. There you go. Yeah, and, Dodge uh, City, Dodge, Dodge the bullets. We would. I was at how I was on campus at Howard University. At eighty seven, yeah. yeah, we oh. we would barely go and we was in the Northwest. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We would barely go off the yeah. off off the campus, but yeah. unless we were going back to our dorm. Well when you came here in eighty seven, uh Condor Terrace, Barry Farms, yeah. Congress Park, all that. Valley Green, all that stuff was still popping. I mean popping, popping. Yeah, yeah. And Did you grow up in that kind of so, environment? Well, sorta of, kinda. Okay. At the, yeah, at the end, you know, when I was a little maybe a little bit older, but I I lived around there. Um, so it, it was a, it was, oh, it yeah. was some challenges yeah. there. Were you, you, were know, you quick with the hands? Oh, very, oh yeah, <laughs> I, I'm nice with my hands. <laughs> very nice. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, at that time, the big thing was, you know, they, they jump you. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, wasn't fighting no one, wasn't, yeah. wasn't fighting yeah. fair, especially you yeah. came to a rival. But you got to live and talk about it. Yeah, I lived in Marshall yeah. Heights, Congress yeah, yeah. Park, you know. Back, you know, when we were growing up, you could I, fight. And then oh, I lived all friends. over yeah. South. Southeast was actually my favorite quadrant of the city. Really? And people say, what? Why? I just felt like Southeast folks were just genuine. Gotcha. The Northeast ones, I was like, oh, no, nah, I don't like Northeast. Mm-hmm. My, my grandmother, we had a family house in Northwest, so knew that. And Southeast Northwest was, the, was cool. Southeast was the no- notorious part at the time, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. South, so, I mean, Northwest was cool. Southwest was cool. My god brother lived over there, and I go over there sometimes. I like, I like Southwest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, true. People was in Southeast. Then Southeast, is, it was just like, don't mess with us. We won't mess yeah. with you. Yeah. You mess with us, yeah. it's a problem. So, um, did you get caught up into the activity that was going at the time? I, no, nah, not really. But I kind of. 
you know, I I, you know, I investigated it, quote yeah. unquote, sometimes. Yeah. But you know what? What kept me away from all of that was the music. Oh wow! Because yeah. my passion for the music superseded yes yes any kind yeah. of temptation yeah. for yeah. yeah you know fast money or yeah. the fast life yes. at that time. I'm and the same I just way, was man. like. I, yeah. I wanted to play my drums. I yeah. wanted to go yeah. in the house and practice and play. And Cass was outside. I, I played football, baseball, yeah. basketball. Mm -hmm. I boxed. Mm -hmm. All of that stuff, mm -hmm. too. But I wanted to play my drums. Yeah. And I, you know, I was like, yeah. I, yeah. I'm like, I understand. That, that ain't me. Yeah. I'm, hey, hey, this is me. So music <laughs> can do that for, for, for Absolutely. some people. Yeah, man. It's, yeah, music so. is definitely something that can steer young folks away from the temptations of street life. Yeah. What well, kind of kid were you, your personality-wise, what kind of kid were you? Um, you probably have to ask my parents about that. But <laughs> 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 they, they, they got some funny stories for you. But I, um, as far as I remember, I, I was very respectful. Um, you respected adults and all Oh, that. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, sir. No, mm -hmm. sir. No, ma'am. No, sir. You know, um, I, uh, you knew, you know, I, you know, my dad, you know, street lights come on. Yeah. Hey, come on in the house. You know, sometimes, you know, if I, I, you know, if I needed to stay out long, you know, I got to tell my mom where I was and my dad yeah. where I was. And just, yeah. you know. Yeah. I was very respectful. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's, that's I was just having of, fun, and I was kind of joke jokester, you know, laughed just to talk a lot and uh -huh. talk a lot, some, you know. And uh, a couple girls in the neighborhood used to call me Walkie Talkie. <laughs> walkie to, Talkie, yeah, because I used to talk so much, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's just kind of I was I was Jonah. So wow. So meaning, you know, you come out here, we had them jokes. Yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were good with that. Yeah, with the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Alan Palmer found out one night, twins one night outside. He, really? He wanted to take me back a little bit, start oh, joking wow. about something I was wearing. He out Alan, yeah, yeah, yeah. we was on a break. Alan Palmer, yeah, if he wow. had his yeah, yeah. Man, when I finished, all the cats, <laughs> all, all the cats was laying on the concrete out there. Oh, <laughs> twins, wow. man, crying, laughing. They was wow. like, they didn't they know. know you, they they yeah. didn't know. Yeah. I was vicious, man. I was vicious wow, with Jonah, cool. man. <laughs> wow. So do you come from a musical family? No. No, absolutely not. Okay, so you like you're like a uh, a trailblazer in, in in terms of your family. Yeah. Okay. So uh, my, me and my sister Karen, uh, you know Karen yeah. Lynette mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. sings, yeah. you know now, but she, you know Karen's, you know I I I mean I dragged my sister out. Yeah. I, I saw she had an incredible talent and mm -hmm. just poured her. Hey, come on out here and do a gig. I'm forced to. She was like, nah, nah, nah. Girl, <laughs> you coming with me. Yeah. You sing it like that, you coming now, with she me. she older or younger? Younger. But, okay. You Are know, you the oldest? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, f finally got her out there, man, on the stage. And the rest is history, man. You wow, know, you beautiful. see what yeah, she's yeah, doing yeah, now. Beautiful. Has a career in music. So, 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 you, so it's just us two. Yeah. And you love music. It's, oh, it's, man. Yeah. What? I what can't do you love about this, this is a rhetorical life. question, but what do you love about music? I can't, first of all, I can't imagine my life without it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like it's music is like the most beautiful woman in the world ever. Yeah, no <laughs> I mean, it's no just doubt. like you want to be with her all the time. You want to. Did you know, as a young kid, that you wanted to be involved in music in some way? Absolutely. How young? How, how? I mean, my mom said. When I was, she caught me when I was two and three, four years old. I was had her pot, her spoons and stuff, yeah. hitting on pots. Bing, yeah. bing, the bump, bing, bing. She said that when I was. Most drummers I talk to tell me that same story, man. Now I didn't. Now I don't remember that. Uh, my mother told me about it. My mom was a drummer, so. Oh, so you did come? She, from no, no, no. She's not, but not in that sense okay. of being. Musically inclined, she just played drums okay. in a marching band, which is now called Duke Ellington, but then it was Western High School. Okay. And so she was just like, yeah, I'm just going to get yeah. on the drum line. But she really didn't take it seriously, supposedly. But so yeah. I guess yeah, her yeah. spirit fed, yeah. fed into me. Yeah, I was going to ask you, I said, what attracted, what attracted you to the drums? Um, I'm not really sure. I'm not. <laughs> 
Really? I'm not. I mean, it's just a spiritual thing, you know. Wow, that's heavy. Playing the instrument is any instrument is it's a spiritual thing. So, um, my mom said that, and then you know, it's just like as I got older, I took. I think it was a gap in there. Um, I didn't. I don't remember touching any drums once I start mm -hmm. to remember things because I can remember things back to when I was four and a half years old. Wow. And you don't remember that? I don't remember ever touching anything till I got about ten. Okay. And then when I was 10 years old, I just started, this fever just jumped into my body, and it was just like, wow, play, yeah, the, yeah. play the drums, man. And so um, I went to the deli. You went to where? To the deli. And sandwich? Yeah, yeah. sandwiches. Okay. <laughs> okay. Not to get a sandwich. Okay. But to get old pickle buckets. <laughs> I, I, got a, I gathered about eight to ten pickle buckets. Wow. He said, why do you want these things? I said, I'm doing something, man. I'm building something. I came back home, put the pickle buckets, I washed them out a little so they can get that pickle smell out of them, right? <laughs> so I had a pair of sticks. So I just lined them up on the floor. Wow. <laughs> and then what I realized was I had to flip and rotate certain buckets from highest pitch to lowest pitch. Mm. So now you got something going on the sink. So yeah, 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 yeah. So now I'm, yeah, once yeah. I get all the way down to, mm -hmm. to, to this bucket, I got my drums are in tune. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's so I was so like sonically inclined. Yeah. Even at that age, I was just like, Okay, I knew wow. this was the highest pitch bucket. This was the second highest pitch, blah, 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 yeah, so on, yeah. so on, so on. And I remember my one of my idols was uh, Sugarfoot Ricky Wellman, who would later on become my one of my a big brother to me, mm -hmm. which I never dreamed he and I would have a relationship yeah. and like that. Because I used to just go see him at the go-go. He was playing drums with Chuck Brown and... You know, in the 80s, and I just, I was just like, oh, my God, he had this big Tamil drum set, and that Tom's going all the way around here, and I'm mm -hmm. just thinking, God, that's a beautiful drum set. One day, one day. So I couldn't afford a drum set, so uh, lo and behold, I went up to some thrift stores. Mm -hmm. And uh was a thrift store. Um, got a bass drum. Wow. Uh, then uh, Silver Spring. Mm -hmm. Dell, and, not Dell Music. No, no, it wasn't okay. a music store. So okay. Was just a thrift going, store. Yeah, I okay. wanted to see they have old drum set in there. I could, you know, I wanted to build a drum set now because I, I need a drum set. I really <laughs> need this to happen. So my mom's like, oh, God, what's all this noise? You couldn't play the horn. You couldn't play something quiet or the flute or something. Or piano or something. <laughs> she come in my room smoking her cigarette and puffing. <sighs> you can't play nothing. <laughs> I'm like, you not going to play nothing? I'm like, nah, I'm playing the drums, mom. Just get, get, get your ears ready. Get your ears ready for the drums. Yeah. That's what you're going to hear. So she just let it go. And then she would come in my room subsequently over time, different times, just stay in there and look at me and go, okay, you're getting a little better. Mm -hmm. Getting a little better. Keep it going. And leave out, do something else. And, uh, I remember, you know, I got that bass drum. It was a real Ludwig 20-inch bass drum. Mm -hmm. it didn't have heads on both sides of it, which was cool for me because none of the go-go drummers had bass drum front heads on the front anyway. So mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. oh, I'm in yeah. lock and step now. So I took the bass drum, I sat it up, and I created a stand from the bass, where well, the bass drum had a, a tom holder on it. I tied the, the toms, <laughs> wrapped them up, uh -huh. With diff the hooks and everything, put my two toms, had them sitting up there so like you, this. So you eventually bought some toms? Oh, no, no, no. These okay. were the buckets. <laughs> I put the buckets. Right. See? See, that's see. Oh, that's the Now you, yeah, now you yeah, follow yeah, me. Yeah. So same pickle buckets. Yeah. I pasted them. I wow. attached them to the bass drum, a real legitimate bass drum. It's a love, love with 20 inch to the, mm -hmm. the toms. Well, wow. they, they were my toms. Yeah, they were yeah. pickle buckets. Yeah. Wow. Really. So had them going all the way around. So then watching the Cavalier commercial. Those of you who are from the metropolitan area, you know Cavalier <laughs> had the best commercial, Cavalier Men's Shop. Uh -huh. So they had the great junkyard band on there. 
<laughs> on the commercial. Oh, Lord. And my man, uh, a heavy one, we used to call him. Uh-huh. Heavy one was about 300 pounds, even as a kid. Huge dude. Wow. He's passed on since. Heavy one was playing the drums. And he was heavy. He had a heavy foot. Wow. <laughs> and he was. Mind you of Questlove. Yeah. Yeah. From your homeboy from yeah. Philly, who, yeah. who was a good brother as well. I know him too. Uh, everyone also had a legitimate bass drum with Bucket Toms. Wow. So I felt inspired by him. So I'm playing my thing. I got a real hi hat stand. I went and found a snare. Wow. Oh, man. So I got a real snare still bass drum. Only thing was the Toms. <laughs> So, night the year of 1986, I said, hey, I've played these buckets five years straight. Mm. I can't play them no more. I need a real drum set. <laughs> so I got a summer job, busting tables and stuff like that, uh, Parkway Deli. So I, uh, <coughs> at that point, I just took my check. We got paid every Tuesday. Mm-hmm. We had Venomous Music out of Rockville. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Venomous, Venomous Music with, with Coleman. My guy Coleman O'Donoghue was the mm-hmm. you know, manager there. Drew and all those guys. Treat me special, man. I had a great time with those guys. They were the best, man. Mm-hmm. They treated me like, like I was just one of them. It was just awesome, mm-hmm. man. Was, Venomous Music was just incredible at that yeah. time. Everything was just sitting there. Yeah. I, I miss it so much. I, no disrespect to Chucks. Love Chucks, too. <laughs> but, man, Venomous was just awesome. The way mm-hmm. they set up, man, you yeah. was like in a fairy tale, what man. I go down to? there. I, I just ran out of, I, man, I don't yeah. know, this went bankrupt or something. But went down to the basement, man, and I um, Coleman talked to me about drums, and he was like, man, these drums are really expensive. He said, but I know an affordable drum set that's made by Pearl. It's called Viking Drums. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, what's up with these? And he said, oh, man, you put we put some pinstripes on these. Mm-hmm. They'll sound just tune them up because uh-huh. that's what it really what it's about. You tune it. Your head using and all that stuff like that. I said, man, these drums are thump. They sound just like yeah. the expensive stuff without the cost. So I remember he wrote me up a ticket for five hundred and fifty bucks. Now you gotta remember in eighty six that was yeah, an astronomical yeah. amount of money. Yes, sir. Uh, but I said, you know, I looked over my best friend, Bruce Williams. He had these saxophones, expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why am I crying? Yeah, yeah. It's so exactly. close. <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> I think Bruce had the king or the con or yeah, one of those. Yeah. A super uh, King Super Twenty. Twenty. We well, think yeah. it was King Super Twenty. He had like King that. Super yeah. Twenty he, for sure. He was in a cannon bar, I think. Oh, he yeah, he yeah. had con. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he had all up, yeah. man. Yeah, expensive. And I was like, man, he was like, how much? Oh man, that's about two fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars back then. Yeah, and he was like, ooh, he say five hundred, five fifty. I'm gonna go ahead and pay that. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I shouldn't be crying. Yes, sir. Uh, and but you had to get the symbols too. Mm-hmm. You now I was a Zildjian guy, man. I had to get those Zildjians, man. Mm. I mean, that was just because you got to get that sound. So still a Zildjian guy. So I just basically every Tuesday I just would get on the bus, yeah. take my whole paycheck. They had la- they had all the venomous. They had layaway. They had layaway. They had, do they still? I don't no. know. They, they don't have layaway. No, no nobody. Had, well, day. I don't know if anybody has layaway. But we used to have layaway. You yeah, we did. The but I, I don't know now because yeah. I just don't use layaway. Yeah. yeah. So I ran the venomous every Tuesday. I'm dropping my whole check on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. My mm-hmm. check. One something. Mm-hmm. So, bro, it took me, took me five weeks. Wow. Five in that six week. I got him. The greatest day in my life. Yeah. I I did you I just now did you just sit and stare at drunk. the drums? Bro, I stared at them <laughs> like I was in love with them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget that with a wine red mm-hmm. wine red in color. And uh it's uh so I I, I, I caught a actually when it took the bus up there, couldn't get up there fast enough, pay that last payment. They put everything, I had to call a cab, took a cab. <laughs> One of those vans, yeah. minivans. Wow. 
they put my drums in there, took my cap, came on home. All my boys was waiting outside for me, man, when I pulled up. Really? Wow. They started jumping and screaming, man, because they knew it happened. Get out of here, man. Man, it was like a That's big what, celebration, man. Really? When I when the van the van stopped. Your friends were out there with My friend, my boys that was in yeah. the, we had a little band. Okay, okay, wow. And they knew it was happening that day. Yeah, yeah. And they was like, because we had all been talking every day. <laughs> Mom put that last payment down. I'm uh-huh. bringing them drums on the bar. What yeah, time are you going to yeah, do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. about five or six. Wow. All right, okay. Yeah. Man, I got, when that cab pulled up, all of them standing out there. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of them had already gotten their instruments. Yeah. You know, the keyboard player, he had a keyboard. The, yeah. the Congo player, we was playing go-go, of course. Congo player, he already had his Congos. Bass player already had his bass. I was the only one that didn't have a real instrument. Wow. Totally. Yeah. So they was waiting on me. They was even that guy even got threatened. Ice. They used to call me Ice. Uh-huh. They said You look like this bass player they Ice that used to You don't look like your favorite. They used to play with uh, Chuck. Chuck. He passed. passed away. Yeah. You gotta yeah. remind me of Ice. That was my little brother, man. Yeah. <laughs> Ice. Yeah. yeah. I remember Ice. I yeah. knew Ice. Yeah. So uh I sat there and I, I, I we we just all ah we jumping it. Yeah. Cab driver like, will y'all get out, please? I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> so we stack. All right, man. Yeah, we yeah. stack. Uh-huh. You need help with that, man. Uh-huh. Everybody give me a hand, man. Uh-huh. They grabbing something. Wow. Take it out. Oh man, they want to take them things out of the box right now. No, no, no. Y'all can't take yeah, them all yeah. right here. Yeah, Let's yeah. go to the yeah, practice yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. We take it to the practice room. We take all. When you the say stuff practice out. room. Was that somewhere in your house? No, no, no. Oh okay. no, no, no. We had a practice room over. You know. Okay. By the, you know, so like you wasn't driving, you wasn't driving your mom crazy with the drums at, at home. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh man, look, when it was time to break stuff down, and so where we had our community room, our apartment complex, the 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 the, the resident manager was so gracious and so supportive that she ended up saying, you know what, y'all can practice down there, just you can't practice after eight. Okay. Had to practice because it started getting loud. Yeah, it was real loud. Yeah, so she would let us practice inside sometimes. You know, she's just like, You can leave the drums here, ain't nobody gonna bother them. Lock up the place, cool. Um, but at times, man, I was nervous, purvis, man, because it was a big glass door. Yeah, I just thought yeah, somebody yeah, was yeah, breaking yeah. and steal my drums, man. So all my boys, we just they just grab a drum, take it up to my apartment. Oh, wow. My mom set them up in there, yeah. practicing them. Oh, my mom, I, I did a, a lot. Of, most of my practicing was before my mother got home from work. Gotcha, gotcha. So my mom leave, you know, especially in the summertime. Oh, man, I just practiced all yeah. day long, So man. what was that feeling like, man, when you got, when you unloaded them drums, set them up, and you sat there, was, how, what, was that, what was that feeling like? Hey, you ever been hugged by Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, man. I mean, it, bro, it was God. It was heaven sent. It was God like, man. It yeah. was just, it was, it was, a, it was phenomenal. Yeah. And I just couldn't. My my best friend Bruce, he knew he was so happy for me, man. And all my boys was happy. We just, man, he said, "This is what you worked hard for, bro." Yeah. So, are you primarily self taught? Like when you initially you st- yes. Okay. Yes. And which is very, man. I mean. A lot of cats, bad cats, start out that, that way. Would you, did you just listen to albums? And, oh yeah, imitate uh, one of the first songs I used to follow. I used to like mock a lot of. I would try to copy a lot of stuff I heard on Maze Records, Frankie okay. Beverly and Maze. Mm-hmm. A lot of R and B. My first uh, I, uh, solo that I worked on was the solo by Diamond from Ohio Players, the drummer. Mm-hmm. I wanna be free. Right, right, right. So I that was my first like experience with like trying to emulate some of the great drummers. So did you So it was self taught. So you didn't play in schools? Like I I attempted to play in school, but man, percussion. I mean, middle school. I started playing in middle school. Man, they would just throw you back there, throw music in front of you, like, dude, I don't know how to read. Mm-hmm. Help me, I don't know how to read. Mm-hmm. 
and finally I started learning concepts of reading music because some of my classmates, mm -hmm. you know, were, it is what it is. Some of my white brothers, mm -hmm. they, they had money. Yeah. They had money. Mm -hmm. Their parents were getting, was mm -hmm. getting them private lessons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm back there. I'm probably the only brother in the percussion section. What schools did you go to? I mean, I, I went to different schools, but this was like, uh, this was when I went to middle school. Okay. And then, so, and then I started, and I went to, and I ended up graduating from a, that's Chevy Chase High School. So, were you uh, in the, like were you in a marching band? Anything? Yeah, marching band, jazz ensemble, concert, you know, okay. and ensemble stuff like that. So, at the so were you playing the, drum, the drums the at the school? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So it was, but that was all predicated on me practicing, studying, listening, watching. So I would lot like some of my good friends, like I said. You know, they were getting private lessons, so they, they knew how to read yeah. good. Now, they made, you know, their skill set necessarily wasn't there all the time, but they knew how to read, so they that yeah. was like half of the mm -hmm. battle. So a lot of times they was like, oh, well, this is what you do when you get to this point, and this is a, you know, it's quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth mm -hmm. notes, and this is mm -hmm. how you play them, mm -hmm. you know. And this is this is kind of like you want to read and count the bars. It's how you count the bars and, and stuff like that. So that's how I learned how to start reading concepts of music. Wow. That's but that was kind of it's all this stuff was self taught, you know. Yeah. That's, you know, that's interesting, man. Yeah. Um, a lot of cats get you know that. Yeah. Everybody's not fortunate enough like that. Yeah. And I was joking. Man, uh, some, of, some of the baddest musicians, man, didn't st don't can't read a note of music. So, oh yeah. yeah so, oh yeah. And some get that formal. A lot get that formal training, yeah. but I think I I I think formal training is good. But sometimes I think it's good. I like like when I hear your story, man. I like that even the way you figured out like these are times. Like it was a discovery. It was like that's creative. Yeah. You know, so yeah. you were opening up your creative cavity, whatever that yeah. is. And so, and then and then you would when you listen to music, you say, okay, let me. And so you, it's a different type of listening when you're doing it, and you're just listening versus okay, I'm reading the notes. It's a different part of your brain. That's well, you cool. could they, they, you know, sometimes they would, you know, they would give us this back then. You had a cassette, yeah, and mm -hmm. give you a cassette of yep. the song, mm -hmm. and they had the sheet music for it. And you memorized it, and, and you sat there and you listen to the cassette mm -hmm. and read the sheet music and go, <laughs> yeah, and follow along yeah, with yeah. your finger, yeah, yeah. Oh, ba ba da ba da ba da 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 da. You know, I knew. Okay, damn, I need to be playing a flam here. I need to be gotcha. playing a flam tap on this part. So, how'd you learn the technique and of drums? Like, yeah, how'd you, how'd you learn like paradiddles oh, and all that? This is this is. I didn't learn. Start to learn the technical aspects of drumming until I got to college. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I was really behind. Okay. And I got there just by. Skin of my teeth, as they they say. And we're gonna talk about my. Uh, and when I got there, then I started taking private lessons. Gotcha. And then that's when I learned with the okay, flamacue and yeah. paradiddle and, and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, rider McHugh and you know, five stroke roll and three stroke rough. And yeah. Those things. I didn't know what the hell that was. <laughs> it's like, what the hell is this? I like it. Yeah. But you didn't just didn't know what it. I and then I thought about some of the things I had played previously when I was younger, and I was like. Oh, I play single stroke rolls. I know mm -hmm. double stroke rolls. I just didn't know what they were at that time. I got you, got you. Wow. Mm -hmm. a, so when you were coming up, um, were you influenced by the go go sound? That was the season? absolutely. Oh, yeah, did, that's why I started playing. You started on. playing go go. Go go. Yeah. You, yeah. It's my yeah. roots. Yeah. So you, yeah, you. So so were you any go go bands? You play any go go bands? Yeah, I played quite a few. Okay. And, 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 and it's funny you asked me that because uh, it's funny because I did a gig with. Uh, Elijah Ball Bear one uh -huh. time. And uh he had me on his gigs and I was, you know, happy he did that. But the go go, -go group he has, the Jogo. Jogo. Yeah. And uh he looked jump out. <laughs> I ain't know you played go. <laughs> <laughs> so me being old and Elijah's young brother, yeah. he, you know, I said, boy, I was playing go go for you, was boy. <laughs> You wasn't even a sperm when yeah, I started yeah. playing go-go. Boy, that didn't even your daddy's yeah, nuts. Yeah. So I mean, I'm just be, you yeah. know. 
And he laughed. You know, we laughed about it. But you know the funny thing? I've been, I was living in D.C. about 20 years but, before I even went and ever heard go. No, no. So, like I said, that's why I started. And, of course, it influenced. That's how, that's how I got yeah. my beginning. But a lot of cats didn't know. And so I had a chance to play with several go-go bands. And, and you know, there was times when... You know, things came up where uh, people would talk to me about playing for the big ones and auditioning and doing things for them. You know, Chuck Brown and all them Air Raid and mm -hmm. Ray Essence. I had there was some openings at times, and you know, people, hey man, you want to try out for the Trouble Funk? And you know, I actually we did go to Trouble Funk, but it's just bad energy, just didn't fit for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, Back in I the day, started I'm a group named uh, Subtle Thoughts that's still out there. Really? Yeah, you started, start, yeah, yeah, original. Yeah. yeah, I was original, one of the original members. Right, we right. kind of started yeah, that. Yeah. We actually started at, at my at my townhouse in Northeast. Really? But yeah, a lot of people don't know that. But uh, so, but we were playing smooth jazz, as I hate this. I hate those terms. Contemporary music, gotcha. as I like to say. Um, you know the 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 Najee, George Howard type yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. You know Grover yeah. Washington, kind of in yeah. that vein. But did you go to go, did you go to the go go? Like, Absolutely. They were dangerous at that time, wasn't they? Very. It? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. All the, it's all, remember, <laughs> my hands is nice. Yeah, I got, <laughs> remember that. I, I still, <laughs> but they would they weren't using hands. Oh, no, no, nah, nah, we it, use hands. Oh, no. talking, you know, I, at some go go's, I heard they would. Well, see, that was later on. I, yeah. That was kind of later on once I started. See, by then, I kind of had matriculated out of go-go. I got you, got you, got by you. Then, I, and I hate to sound arrogant like that by using that word, but at that time, I kind of got away from it because yeah. I was at the go-go's in the 80s. Got you. you okay. Know, okay. So, yeah. you know, up, man, 88, 89, they started shooting. Yeah. And I stopped going. <laughs> My yes, mom was like, one night I was going down the black hole. I remember they called it black hole. Then it was Celebrity Hall, uh -huh. and it was different names. And, mm -hmm. you know, on George Avenue down there, it's closed down now. So yeah. yep. he say, uh, I'm from Howard. Yeah. You knew yeah. Celebrity yeah. Hall, yeah. George. Right. So my mom said, hey, you know, my mom really wasn't strict like that. She said, hey, well, I'm just not feeling it tonight. Mm. You don't need to, I don't. I don't feel comfortable with you going to mm -hmm. go-go. My boys waiting on me and everything. We're going to go down there. So I would later on find out, you know. So, of course, I didn't go because my mom said it. Mm -hmm. I just didn't go against my parents. I just didn't. Mm -hmm. So um, later on, find out how people got shot. Wow. Because then they find it. Because once crack hit the scene, yeah. you know, oh, drug dealers yeah. start getting out of control, start bringing guns into the elements. Because we just have, you either fall with your hands or you had a knife. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and the knives was yeah. few and far between. Yeah. It, it was a yeah. scrap. Yeah. You got knocked out or yeah. you, or you, you stood. Or you, you lost, won. Or you won. Lost, or yeah, yeah. yeah. that mm -hmm. was the end of it. And y'all might be cool. And y'all, the next day, y'all yeah. dabbing up. Yeah. Oh, you helping them up yeah. on the ground? Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, good, good yeah. one, man. Yeah. All right, yeah. okay. Yeah. Oh, you going to help me up? Yeah. Nowadays, yeah, man. you know, yeah. something. not like that. Wow. Yeah, man, you, 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 that's nostalgia. You bring back some good memories, man. Oh, yeah, man. About, about how you, oh, you. yeah. Now, when did you get exposed to ding, 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 straight, straight ahead, Jack? Ah, so. <laughs> ah. <laughs> the day my life changed. So, uh, my best friend, my brother for life, Bruce Williams, saxophonist. And before you say that, we're going to, because I want to know how did you, you and Bruce meet? Well, okay, so me and Bruce actually met because Bruce got into a fight with a so-called friend of mine that actually was the Congo player in my go-go band. Uh -huh. and him and Bruce was about to get into a fight, and it got, got a little testy, but they didn't scrap or anything. And then me and Bruce stood on the side, and we had a conversation, and I was like, realized me and Bruce, we had a lot in common. We We just... Like, good brothers just talking, yeah, yeah. just talking things out. It's like, oh, man, you know, he going to fight me or what, man? You know, Bruce yeah, still yeah, after yeah, like, yeah, nah, yeah. man, you no need for that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, I yeah. see you playing sax, but you play saxophone, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, know, yeah. you know, I play drums, yeah, you know? Yeah. We talking about, hey, man, forget all that fight yeah, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about this music. Yeah. Me and him, you no, know, we talk. Man, and when you, I mean, when, how, that was, that we were both about. 11 or 12 years old. 
Really? Something like that. Mm. Oh, mm. wasn't even maybe 10 years old. Damn. 11. 11. Something like that. I think we were 11 or 12. Okay. And uh, now 51, 52. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 1969. Yeah. See, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so, you know, 40 plus years later. Yeah. Still my brother, still, you know. So y'all just we, had a natural. We just clicked. Yeah. No, we just clicked, man. Tight Bruce, since? Bruce and Gemini, I'm a Sagittarius, man. We kicked it off, man. We have, have y'all ever butted hits? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, plenty of times. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, man. We <laughs> brothers. That's yeah, what happened. That's what <laughs> I mean, he believed what he believed. I believe yeah, what I yeah, believe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. We, yeah. You know, but we always come back together. Yeah. Um, And we've been there for each other in, even in roughest, roughest times, mm-hmm. man, you know. Um, uh, and so, you know, tragically in 87, you know, Bruce lost his father. So, mm-hmm. You know, uh, it was a rough time for him. Always, we always like brothers, man. We yeah. come, we come together. Yeah, you know that's beautiful. It yeah. was even a time me and Bruce both lost both both our girlfriends, <laughs> lost both our girlfriends. <laughs> on the both of us at the same time. Like, really? Wow. Yeah, man. You know, <laughs> yeah. And, you know his girl cheating on him. I am cheating on me. <laughs> Oh man, we got yeah, yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna be all right, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, kind of cool by y'all, yeah. with it, man. You know, kind of cheering each other, up, man. Don't cry, bro. Don't yeah, cry, bro. I love you, man. Don't cry, you know. Oh, oh man. don't you cry, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. We yeah. crying on each other's yeah. shoulder, man. But you know, it was a sad time for us at the time. Teenagers was like, man, one thing was constant: we brothers. Two, this music ain't going yeah. nowhere. We gonna deal with this music, which is why Bruce. Was like, man, you know when you tight with somebody, they show you a lot of stuff. Uh-huh. You know, mm-hmm. you remember you and Munir was y'all yeah. was yeah. thick as thieves. I'll never forget that yeah. Munir yeah. Nasser. Yeah, my, boy. my brother too. Yeah, yeah. you know, crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so Bruce was like, hey man, he, hey, hey, oh, bro, uh, yeah. you gotta hear this, <laughs> you gotta hear this. <laughs> For real, I was like, yo man, come. <laughs> Uh-huh. Nah, man, come on my house. Come on my uh-huh. house right now. Yeah. I'll play this record for you. So I go over his house. Bruce about five, seven, seven, eight minutes away. I go over Bruce's house. Walk over there. Man, what, 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 what man? Come on. <laughs> he puts on random ass track. Branford? Branford. <laughs> wow. With and t- he plays. Chain t- t- watch. Ooh. <laughs> now that's. No, the one he played, the one I think Lewis Nash was on. Lewis, okay. Scenes of the City, one of them. Okay. Scenes of the City, I okay. think it was. Okay. And he plays this record with Tony Williams, Ron Carter, Herbie Hancock. Wow. And, and the, the, you know, that yeah, super, yeah, yeah. super band they had together. Uh-huh. And I'm like, and, 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 and Winton and the Branford and Winton out front oh, when they uh, playing the VSOP, Sister Shirley and all that, that VSOP, VSOP yeah, band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, ooh, yeah. we, yeah, <laughs> damn, what is that? Yeah. Ever since that day, that's been it. Wow. So that we, impacted you, bro. When I heard that shit, yeah. I was done. It was over. Wow. Bye, Go-Go. I, like, <laughs> I got a new girlfriend. <laughs> Called straight in. Oh, man. I wanted to do this so bad after wow. that. I was like, I got, I need that. Wow. Just what, what was it about that that was so compelling, bro? That spirituality. Okay. It was just, ooh. Yeah. I heard the intellect. Uh huh. The science going on. Yeah. And I'm like, damn. Yeah. This is a complex form of music. This yeah. isn't a generic in a sense. There's no disrespect to Go Go. It is what it is. Yeah. But if Go Go's addition and subtraction. <laughs> Straight ahead must be calculus. <laughs> must be advanced yeah, calculus. Yeah. <laughs> so you sitting there going, ooh, ooh, wow. this like this this is gonna require some intellect. Yeah. I'm gonna have to do some serious study for this music. And, and prior to that, you really didn't listen to jazz? I I didn't know what it was. How old were you around this? So I'm about 15. Wow. Yeah. Six to 15, 16 wow. at that time. And I'm like, this shit is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Do you still feel like And that? so I had to go back 
Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and so I had to go back. I said, well, this guy, Jeff Watts, who life would yeah. just, it's, life is just funny like that. Yeah. Jeff Watts, now one of my big brothers as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never in a million years thought I would meet. I told Jeff about this too. And Jeff just laughed. He just laughed at me. He laughs about yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. He's like, stop it, man. Yeah, yeah. But told him about it. I told Tony Williams about it before he passed. Mm -hmm. The great Tony Williams wow. who. You got to meet Tony Williams? Absolutely. Me and Mark Prince. Damn, I ain't never Me and Mark Prince, my bro my really? drunk brother. Yeah, you know, man, I wish I could. Me and could. Mark I, Prince. Would you, would you get Look, me? Mark Prince. Me and Mark Prince was down at Blues Alley one night. So, Mark. So, me and Mark, yeah, let's go meet Tony. Uh -huh. So so Mark, oh, oh, he big man until he get up those steps. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know that blues yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't sit up there in yeah, that room. Yeah, yeah. And do, so we go up to the green room. So he go. So I get <laughs> me and Mark coming up the steps. Uh -huh. He see we looking at. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, it's yeah. Tony Williams. Yeah, he's yeah. sitting right there. He's yeah. smoking a cigar. Wow. He's, Tony got a bowl of chili sitting there. A bowl a glass of, chili? of wine. Wow. You remember because Blues Alley was famous yeah. for that chili. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. He had a bowl of chili, glass of wine, and he was smoking a cigar. Wow. He was chilling. He had his leg crossed. Never mm -hmm. forget his position. He was sitting on that couch at Blues Alley. Man, now me and Mark, I'm thinking me and Mark gonna walk a simultaneously because, you know, <laughs> me and Mark go from DC Youth Orchestra coming up from 84. That's how okay. long I know Mark. So, and Melvin Prince, his oldest brother, yeah. older brother is. No, that's my big yeah, brother. Yeah, you know, I was yeah. with him last week. Yeah, we, we, yeah, that's yeah. my family. Yeah, no doubt. So, so I get up there. Mark pulls the trick. Mark turns around, push me and Tony. <laughs> he did. Yes, <laughs> you go. <laughs> <laughs> now you know. Now oh, he, Tony man, Williams, funny. can you believe this? Yeah. Tony Williams is sitting there, and we both kids. Yeah. And he pushes me. <laughs> he pushes me. Like, hey, wait, yeah. hey, wait, wait, yeah. wait. Yeah. Yeah. Like, calm down. What yeah. you doing? Yeah. Oh, how, how you doing, Mr. Williams? Yeah. Yeah. Now I got a face yeah. up. Yeah. You know, because I'm in his face now. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. And uh, I never forget. He was smoking this cigar. I looked at me. So I... <laughs> <laughs> That's what he did? Yeah. Wow. He nodded his head, and I stuck my hand out because I was just, uh -huh. you know, that's how I was raised. My dad said, stand up straight, uh -huh. put your hand out, shake like a man, uh -huh. be a man. Uh -huh. So my dad told me how to be a man, like just mad stuff. Like, how you doing, Mr. Williams? Wow. Look him, look him in the eye. Uh -huh. <laughs> nah. So Tony, his hand out, I put my hand out like uh -huh. that. Uh-huh. And he, if you hold your hand out, I'll show you, he kind of. Really? He didn't shake my hand. Wow. And Mark was trembling in his boots, man. <laughs> Mark was like, now you go, Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Mark was like, and Mark, yeah, Mark probably laughed at this story if he sees did, this did, video. Did y'all get to talk to him? Oh, we tried, man. He was short or worse. He really wasn't. He yeah. really wasn't. He said, thank you. Yeah, yeah, he just said, yeah. sure, everything, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Wow. You know, everything we say, Mr. Williams, we watch you. I just see you on this. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, wow. No. I Look, no, yes. One liners. He really? Nah, he wouldn't engage at all. Wow. That's crazy. And man. so it kind of was like, uh, it was. It, it kind of put me on ice a little bit with him, but he was so great and magnificent on the yeah, drums, yeah. man. He just, I was in love with him. So I could <laughs> keep so, watching him. So out of all the. What dra jazz drummer impacted you, would you say, the most out of all these? All of them. I'm sure. All but of it them. wasn't it wasn't one particular day. Nah. Absolutely not. But I'ma tell you, I'ma tell you what catapulted me to knowing that I was doing the right thing. That's my big brother Nat Nasa Abaday. Come on. Yeah. Nasa Abaday, who uh -huh. I love. I just mm -hmm. Nasa's my that's one of my guys. Mm -hmm. You know. My heroes, man. Big brother. He started out. He was one of the first drummers to start our program at UDC mm -hmm. with Calvin yeah, Jones. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the great, my brother, James King, love so much. Also on bass, Aaron Graves, who I love yeah, so much yeah, yeah, on yeah, bass. Yeah. Big brother, he, same birthday. Yeah. Wow. December yeah. 20th mm -hmm. with him. Uh, so, he, me, him, and Larry Willis, same birthday. Um, 
And so I was at school and uh, sounded pretty horrible. <laughs> you said you said <laughs> Yeah, struggling. Uh-huh. Struggling, man. Get my butt kicked. Jones was yeah. kicking our butts. Um, and we had the summer jazz series in the uh, cup, like the little arena, out, like outdoor yeah. arena that we had, yeah. amphitheater yeah. at UDC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those go back. Remember that? That was just the joint. I yeah. want to get back to getting that opening again, mm-hmm. and get open again, and having concerts there whatsoever. Um, and I went over there, and I remember it was a jazz festival there. Saw. Melvin was running south, Melvin Prince, mm-hmm. matter of fact. Uh, saw the great Arne, jazz vocalist. I don't know if you remember Arne. Arne doesn't, I don't think she lives here in town. Arne. Remember Arne? So Arne was singing around town, and Arne was like the, she was like the, the Diane Reeves of D.C., man. She, okay, okay. She kind of like yeah. got, yeah. you know, a little yeah. thing going. Her and Sonny something, and all of them, you know, had the little, yeah. uh, Is she still you some, remember Rhonda she, Ross was, at Howard, she was yeah, singing a little yeah. bit. You know, the did vocalists they, were around. I haven't heard nothing about did they Sharon know? Clark, yeah. all them vocalists yeah. was around. Yeah. You know, I you kind of, yeah. you know, it was a little vocal thing going on no for doubt. a little bit yeah. in that, at that time. And uh, this was in the, the, the uh, I want to say, what, late 80s? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe probably oh, 80, 90, yeah. 88, 89, yeah. okay. 90 maybe. Um, and when I saw our name, she had James King. Mm-hmm. Aaron Graves on piano, James mm-hmm. King on bass, Nassa Abaday on drums. And they was burning. Really? Mm. They was smoking. Come on. And I was like, ooh! <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time I seen a live concert because I hadn't really, like, straight wow. ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hadn't, and to me, I was learning it in the school, but I wasn't really coming out yeah, and, and seeing, seeing it, yeah, yeah, like that, uh, like that, and then that's what spurred me to like start getting around the clubs, one step yeah. down, twins, yeah, all these different clubs, and uh, the great Reuben Brown would let yeah. me sit in with him yeah. at that one step. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah. I almost I thought I was in heaven, dude. I played I, so I, many damn colors on. Yeah, me. man, I played with. I had. I couldn't I even play. A, I, I did out. a gig oh with him god. with uh, what it was, Keita Betts. Ruben Brown and uh, um, uh, uh, I can't think of my mind is, I'm, we getting old, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, damn, it'll come to me. But yeah, yeah. That I, I felt like I was floating on the cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way the way Ruben Brown. Oh said, my uh, yeah, god! Because yeah. Jones had told us about Ruben Brown. Yeah. He was like, Yeah, man, Ruben Brown, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's dangerous, man. He's yeah, deadly. Yeah, 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 and Jones yeah. would say stuff like that about somebody. You knew that cat was bad. Wow. I mean, you knew if Jones stamped, because Jones didn't give no compliments. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. yeah. <coughs> you had he to earn t- it. Yeah, you had yeah. to earn that. <laughs> you were earn it. It's like Smith and Barney. Yeah. You got to earn it. So, so, wow. but, but that concert, like I said, and sitting in. And then I would go up to uh, Tacoma Station. Marshall Keys, my big brother. Yeah, it was a lot Paul of jazz. Carr, my big yeah, brother. It was a lot of jazz they let me, at that time. They let me sit in. Yeah. I'll never forget. Lenny Robinson was playing drums, my big that. bro. And yeah. James King. And, you know, they let you sit in, man. And he was like, I have no business being here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, the, but thank you I, for yeah, the opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, that's what... And so when I got older and I started being a guy like that, mm-hmm. that's why I opened the door and I wanted the young cats, hey, man, y'all yeah. come sit in. Y'all yeah. come. Man, it's, it's room for all of y'all. Yeah. I made no sure doubt. everybody sat in. When I started running the jam yeah. sessions yeah. and stuff like that at Twins, I made sure Billy everybody Hart. got a chance. Billy Hart, Jabali. Yeah. Oh, man, Dad. I called him Dad. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, oh, oh, man. It, can you imagine, so a lot of people say I sound like Can you imagine being things. in the band with Billy Hart? Well, I play, I play, I, I, I Key to Betts. Oh, I emulated Ruben. a lot of stuff Billy Hart's done. Man, I was, it meant, you know what Betts, I, found, I went to when school you have with cat, his daughters. When you have cats on that level, it makes it easier to play. Oh, way easier to play. Yeah, it's, it's Because, you know, you know they're going to be in tune. One. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. A lot of people got intonation problems. Yeah, yeah, but you ain't heard that from yeah. me. 
<laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Now, Kid of Bats, is, I went to school with his kids. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, so I knew about the legend, never got the chance to play with him. Wow. So, But you met him. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He's beautiful. So let's go back. You, What year did you enter uh, UDC? Uh, the fall of 1988. 19, okay. What, and um, I had opportunities to. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm go ahead. I'm no, go ahead. Yeah, opportunities. To, no, you said. You were, I was just wondering what made you choose UDC. I thought you were going to ask that question. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I go ahead. It's all good. Check, but be rude or anything. But I choose UDC for two words Calvin Jones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a good reason. Oh, no. That, four words. Judith Corey. Yes. Okay. Both good reasons. Yes. Hey, four words. That's that. And that no, was, did that's you know about me. them prior to? No, I didn't. Uh, Bruce, again, Bruce told me about coming up there. So Bruce was a, a year ahead of you, right? Because Bruce, yeah. I think he graduated in 87 with me. Yeah. Uh, 87, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he was so, going to UDC at the time? Yes. Okay. So Bruce, uh, you know, because I was supposed to be in that class too, but they kept me back. Mm -hmm. My parents, my mom kept me back. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. That's a long story. But, so, Bruce was like, man, you need to come on up here with Jones. Who Who is Jones? I kept hearing about him, hearing about mm -hmm. him. So, I had went around to different schools. There was some talk about, you know, we even went around to University of Hartford. Me and Bruce and all of us went up to University of Hartford with the great with, Jackie uh, McClain. Jackie, yeah, Jackie. Who I would. Subsequently, get an opportunity to play with yeah, later on. Yeah, which yeah was that's a dream. Yeah, that's why I'm true. One of the living. And we're gonna matches. talk about some of the catch you played. Oh my yeah. god, J J Mac just blew us away. I spent time with him. I was at his house and just wow the stories, bro. I'm saying we sat there for and, and you know them old cats, man, old heads, them them them, them yeah. legends. Don't go to their house. Oh, yeah. You 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 gonna stay a while. Yeah. Well, that's then pack your lunch. That's why we talking. Jazz is about the stories. Oh, the stories. Man, oh man, that's where you when get the inspiration from. Right. Outside of the music, right? It's the behind him. You know, I used to read up on Bird, and I used to talk to the old cats. I used to ask. Them, well, you know, Jackie cats, was Bird's protege. Yeah, but the young cats. Do you that? This is I'm I'm I'm. This is conjecture. Oh, well, I this just I don't see the young cats. Asking the questions like no. the old cats like that. No. No. They kind of come out because they can play, no. but they bunch, don't get the stories. Arrogant, bunch of arrogant. I got other words for it, but I'm not going <laughs> to say it. But, man, back in the day, man. You they don't want that, bro. They want everything fast and quick. They don't want to earn the grind, they say. Like, they, a lot of them run up to me now. They, oh, kingfish, man. Show me how to swing like that. Uh -huh. Well, Sorry. <laughs> this ain't no instant yeah. swing. Like you can't just like put it, like pour a packet of it in the bowl and then pour some hot water over and stir it up. Yeah, yeah. And then you know how to swing. Yeah. Nah. But this is years of. And there's something you said, man. That they you know, that they don't. I don't work. know if they teach this or they understand. It's the spirit behind the music. It's the. It's not just playing. The, the, it's not just music. It's the, like yeah, it's, it's the spirit. spirit. Yeah. And so that that connect is. A lot of times, that's the that's yeah. the missing portion. Yeah. It's like it's like I remember uh, we had a saxophone player from here named Ari Ambos, bro. So I knew I knew Ari. Yeah, he was so bad. Ari's of New York. Now. He back. Okay, bad cat. Just yeah. saw badass, but yeah. you can play all the train stuff. Mm -hmm. Some was missing. A major part was missing. Mm. That spirituality was missing. Wow. Now, so you can sit there and you can emulate all these things. Good brother Richard Noble. I don't know if you remember Richard Noble. Know, it, Richard Noble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds just like Train. Yeah, yeah. Play all the Train stuff. Um, Richard got a presence with him, but he's not trained. It's no disrespect to him. That's my bro. I love him. Yeah. But it's only one John Coltrane. There would never be another John no Coltrane doubt. just based off of spirituality. Yeah. And, no, you know. Miles um, Davis. There's no more Miles Davis is coming. I like to see cats. Bud, no, it's yeah. no more Bud coming. Forget it. I no like more to, monk. I like to. I I can tell a cat when I when he put a horn when he puts his horn down, uh -huh. or, and we start talking. That's that because you are your music is a reflection of who you are. Like the way you are comes out in your music. 
Absolutely. And see, a lot of cats, I'm like, damn, y'all playing all these notes and all that. But then when I talk to you, the substance of our, you know, it's like. Nah, man, Greg Hutchinson, good brother, phenomenal world drama, one of my favorites, man. My brother, Greg Hutchinson, man. Ooh, y'all, that cat. Oh, yeah. Monster. Yeah, we did Pure the bed. Monster. We did the bed. I was in a hit with all these bad cats. Uh, Betty Carter. The, the, the jazz hit. Yeah, I, was I did the, that. The very one first year. one. Yeah. And it was Greg Hudson, Brian Blair, yeah, yeah. Uh, Clarence P. Ooh, ooh, it was a bunch of cat men. It was too damn it was, much heat, man. It, it, That's it, too oh, much draw for me. Yeah, it, it was uh, All them. Alvin Garnett. Now, I don't have Alvesta, a relationship with Alvesta, Brian. Alvesta Garnett. Oh, that's my yeah, bro. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I say I got relationships with all of them except Brian Blade. Okay. But Beautiful but cat, but, yeah. but I was saying Greg, Greg Hudson's name because he was just talking about that the other day. It was like, it's about the stories. It's about saying the same thing you're saying. It's about the stories. It's about understanding the music. It's about uh, putting context into it. It's not yes. It's not just anybody could come up. Anybody could come up and do a, a five-stroke role. Yeah. But it's how you look. Yeah. Did you hear Elvin play that five-star role? Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you hear Philly Joe play that yeah, five-star yeah, role? Yeah, yeah, It's different, ain't it? Yeah. It's different because yeah. of it's it's a reason. reason. Yeah. Ralph Peterson, my great big brother. The, the great, late, great Ralph Peterson. My brother, yes, sir. love him. Never forget our great conversations. Oh, yeah. I loved him so much, man. Yeah. Ralph Peterson, I miss him, man. And he I'm had the spirit him. of the music. The spirit? Did. Are you yeah. kidding me? <laughs> That's an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> and Ralph would talk, well, fish, you know, you know, the, uh, if you ain't got the it yeah. up in you, well, it ain't going to come off right. <laughs> Your swing just ting, 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 yeah, ting, ting. Yeah, yeah. Or it's going to be dang, ting, 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 ting. <laughs> no, you're going to put that snake yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what, yeah, no you doubt. know, no Kenny Watson does say the drone. He said, you got to have that. The it. Boom. When you hit the symbol, shoo, wow. that thing need to radiate across the damn world. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's heavy. Like you just don't hit the symbol. You just, yeah. Shoo. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a way you do it. And it's, 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 it's coming from within. Wow. It's a spiritual thing. You got to have, you got to believe in the high pot. How? Mm -hmm. First of all. Uh-huh. Two, you got to understand the concept of humanity and spirituality and how they intersect. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. And these things that are around us, the cosmic yeah. zone. Mm -hmm. You got to be in touch with the mm -hmm. with the moon and the stars and yeah. the satellite, the galaxy. You got to be in touch with all <laughs> yes, that yeah, stuff, yes, the water, the yes, rain, the, 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 the fire. <laughs> yeah. You got to be in touch with all these elements. Yeah, no doubt. And that is all compressed and, in, and, and it's just channeled and manifests it manifests itself through that music, wow. your music. And if you don't do that, bro, yours is going to sound a little bit yeah, iffy. Wow. <laughs> great, great stuff. <laughs> so you listen, know that, it, though, because you play that on saxophone. Well, you know, I came up in our <coughs> generation. We, from, we, connect, we got a foot in the old oh, yeah. and a foot in the new. Oh, yeah. And so I think it's our time to, as leaderships, because we've always, we've paid homage to, to yeah. But at a certain point, who, we are the ones who got to pass it on to the, so the next generation can understand it in the context and get the, all the stuff you just talked about. Okay, but, the, but, but see, but see it, it's like a quote I just read. And, you know, sometimes you can, some to, to the effect, and I, 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 I don't want to mess this up. I'm no, not going to mess the quote up verbatim. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to say it verbatim, but paraphrase it. Okay. So... It's kind of like you can give someone the message, but they have to be ready to receive the message. And, and I, so yeah. a lot of these young people, and I'm not criticizing. I, I, God knows I love my young people. I do. But they are not always ready to receive that knowledge. Oh, you're telling me what to do. This is too much. The system overload. Oh, because cause Alan Johnson loves to tell this story about how I kidnapped him one day. <laughs> how you kidnapped him? Wow. When, he, when he first came to UDC in 92. Uh-huh. You know, and I kidnapped him, and it made him go go come over the house with me. Okay. Just played all these damn rockets. Uh-huh. Hey, man, you want something to drink? Want something to eat? All right, cool. 
<laughs> she gonna listen to this rock, this rock. You know about Bud Powell. You know yeah. about man. He told he told tell a lot of he tells a lot of people about that story. But I I wanted him to understand that this music is just different. Yeah, it's not play, It's not. It's no disrespect to other genres, but it's just not playing rock and roll. I played rock and roll. I played heavy metal in high school. I was mm-hmm. in a heavy metal band. Yeah. Loud guitars, everything, rock drums, mm-hmm. out the whole nine, punk rock, all mm-hmm. kind of stuff. Uh, uh, Go Go, I played that. R and B, I played that. But there's something about Ray. I play reggae, ska, all these different things, Latin music. Something about this straight ahead, though. Yeah, it's just like it's just different, especially when it's done right and on a high level. Yeah, it's it's, it's like, oh my god, it's it's nothing like it, man. It's it's uh. Um, I find too that because when you're talking about energy and all this and frequency and all this stuff, man, mm-hmm. who you play with can affect the way you play. Oh my God, yeah. And so if you can find the cats that y'all, y'all can center, y'all have a nice have synergy, synergy. Mm-hmm. man, it's it, it's like you oh, like it's like, it's like butter on biscuits. You, you, you dig it? <laughs> <laughs> He's a no, on it, it is. I, I know. I had to give a food analogy, right? Uh-huh. But it is. It's like so, for real. So, there's certain cats now. I'm at the age where I'm 51 years old. Mm-hmm. I can pick and choose who I want to play with. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna play with everybody. Mm-hmm. It just is what it is. Yeah. Cause you you just don't have good energy on the stage. Yeah, no doubt. I'm not gonna play with you. You don't have no spirit. Mm-hmm. You cold, born. <laughs> you might be and, and, and might be technically proficient. Yeah, yeah. That's but what I don't want to play with you. I just what I, 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 I love about you, man. You always shot from the hip. Oh you yeah, all, yeah. You've always. Some people can be put off by that. Yeah, but I love it because you, it's real. And like and a lot of like you said, a lot of young people they don't want to. They 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 internalize criticism. To the point, oh yeah, they don't know how to say. Okay, you can you can listen to an elder, and, and I tell my sons this, man. Listen, whatever works for you at this stage, take that and throw everything else away. Well, look at if you look at if you look at like so, man, my brother, my little brother Eric Willer, oh, bass yeah, player. Yeah, yeah. So Eric, Eric said this one day to me, man. I was in tears. I tears just fell on my eyes, man. Cause it's just like the best compliment you can get ever. Mm-hmm. We were sitting in the trailer. We was at the Montclair Jazz Festival. Me, Christian McBride, your mm-hmm. brother that yeah, you yeah, grew yeah, up yeah, with yeah, as well. Yeah. Chris Back, world f- phenomenal drummer. Mm-hmm. My brother as well. We all sitting in the trailer and we talking. And that's where the best stories on earth yeah, come out. Yeah, you yeah, know, we yeah. in there cracking up, acting no a fool as usual, taking a break. It's hot outside. Got the air conditioner on, so we all having to, it's cooling down. And Eric said, he said, Fish, man, I just wonder. I never did this. I never thanked you, man. He said, remember you used to take me on them gigs with you? Yeah. Back in the day? Mm-hmm. I said, yeah, man. <laughs> so I started looking at him like, where are you about to go with this? <laughs> right? Uh-huh. I'm like, I'm scared because yeah. I don't know where this cat going yeah, with yeah. this. So he said, man, he said, man, I want to thank you, man, because, you know, you 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 would you would get at me, man, on those gigs, man. You always tell me something, man, that I grew from. Yeah. And he said he said, Why'd you do that? He said, Man, like you a couple times you was like, Man, you need to check your intonation mm-hmm. a little bit, watch the hump, watch mm-hmm. the beat. You know, mm-hmm. me and him sat and talked about the connection between the rise symbol and the hi hat mm-hmm. with his bass mm-hmm. being the anchor. Yeah. Yeah. And and how you know, which yeah. was passed down to me and I wanted to pass it to him. Mm-hmm. And he accepted it. Yeah, yeah. And look at him now. Yeah. Playing with every damn yeah. body yeah. on the world stage, yeah. been around the world. Yeah. That's phenomenal, that's world-class bass player yeah. now. Yeah. And thanking me. And I'm yeah. like, who the hell am I? You know, I'm sitting there tearing up because <laughs> wow. he just blew yeah. my mind about something I had totally forgot about. And, man, we're going to, on the other side, we're going to take a break in a minute. We're going to talk, because you're educated. I want to talk about some of your experiences in education. Oh, God. <laughs> but, but... What I learned about education, man, is that the reward sometimes doesn't come to way down the line. You don't know which the seeds that you're playing today. 
they're not going to germinate or sprout to way down the line. Yeah, they'll germinate and, and so that's what, that's, yeah. that's the beauty of the, of teaching. Absolutely. So um, I got a few more questions before we take a break, and then we we're gonna go we're gonna go deeper into learning more about uh, you and, sure. and some of your experience. Sure. Right? Um, I just wanted to you mentioned uh, uh, Mr. Calvin Jones mm -hmm. and Ms. Judah Corey. How did they impact your life, and what impact did they have on you as a person, a musician? And artists, whatever. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Uh huh. That was that was my that was my mom and dad. Wow. Seriously. Yeah. That was my mom and dad. Yeah. I spent majority of the time of the day with them. Mm. Monday through Friday. <laughs> yeah. All day with them. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. All day. Mm hmm. From nine o'clock that morning <laughs> to like seven, six, seven, <laughs> eight, nine o'clock at night. Wow, I'm there in music building all day. We go is all is that what a, like a lot of your growth in terms of oh, reading yeah. at, at UDC? Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah. Because oh, you yeah. were you were you in the band. You oh, yeah, were, but I didn't take. I, I got to get through that. theory. I had yeah. to take Judith Corey. Yeah, my, yeah. She was my first. <laughs> yeah. You know, fundamentals, music, and all that stuff. And, yeah. You know, then you had to take theory two, theory yeah. three. You get the Van Buren at theory four. Wow. You know, Professor Van Brennan, you know, I had yeah, to take yeah, that yeah. two times, two, yeah. three times before I got past that. <laughs> oh, we can't. Yeah. Well, sir, that's not a yeah. Neapolitan six. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like. <laughs> you know, no, that is not an anticipatory. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. you, I took four of an analysis with him. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, you know. Yeah. You know, so it was, I yeah. have, sir. I am sorry. Here. This is this, this, this is not. Yeah, he was this is not. <laughs> I don't know what you wrote. Yeah, but oh man, this is not music, sir. Yeah, <laughs> this is not music. I don't know what the jargon you are yeah. you're trying to present. To yeah, me that's is. funny, man. But it's not. Yeah, hey, it's all right. <laughs> Take that big red pencil. And yep, yep. Circle. Yep, yep. Put. We used to call that the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Did he mark your paper up with the blood of Jesus? Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, mine too. Yeah. Stayed up all night. Yeah, that's hilarious. You bro. know, trying to. Y'all call the blood oh, of Jesus? Oh, sir, I, what mode is this? This is not Mixolydian. <laughs> I don't know what mode you're in, yeah, yeah. but it's not Mixolydian. Oh, you know, man, yeah, that, you know, that is hilarious. Tell him what mode you in. Were, were you a music ed major? Yeah, that, well, well, music ed, just general music. Okay. Yeah. So you, you had to get your. Do the education? Yeah, so I had to take the, you know, proxies okay, and stuff no, like okay. that later on. I, I just didn't want to deal with the, the education side of it. Gotcha, gotcha. Kind of. We got 135 we, credits, so you yeah. had to stay another and year, year did you graduate? five year program. What year did you graduate? <sighs> I wish I start. Nah, don't say that, man. <laughs> <laughs> we not going to talk about that, man. Yeah, okay. Oh, we not going to talk about right. that, man. So. No. So, but then did I finally finish yeah. my last class? No, we're not gonna okay. talk about that's that. We're gonna but pass you finished? That. Yes, I did. That's, that's, all, that's all good. It's Proudly. All good. Yeah, that's all good, man. <laughs> After, ooh, man, I was like Ice Cube on Higher Learning. That's, that's I all like good. I like the 10-year plan. That's all good. Oh, God. <laughs> Took me so, so long man, to graduate from uh, Then I got my master's in one year. That's the crazy yeah. What'd you get your master's? Uh, music. I mean, yeah, education. What? Where'd you get it? So I have a uh, Concordia University. Oh, I didn't know that. Portland, man. yeah, got a master. Oh man, okay. So See, that was, it. but I had, uh, and I have half of a master's to, in uh, at uh, Georgia State Music. Oh man, okay. So, I, I, I didn't to, know that, man. You no, know, had some domestic so we issues. We learned a lot about leave. Kingfish over here, man. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, man. I had to get that. I got so a for uh, school, you know, yeah. teaching. So we got a. Um, I got one more question, and then we're going to take a, a, a okay. break, and then we're going to okay. come on the other side. Um, do you have a musical philosophy or, or life philosophy that, that, that you live by um, that, or that you can share with them? You know? uh, I have different philosophies and, you know, case-specific, you know, depending on what the, yeah. what the context is. Which, would, would, well, give us one of them, like a life uh, in terms of... Um, uh, a life philosophy or anything that we can go out on. So, I mean, well, I, I know if you had a young person, 
Okay. That wanted to pursue music. Okay. What advice would you give that person? Well, I always start jazz, out with in particular make, jazz. Well, make sure that you're serious first. Uh huh. Because if you're not serious, I'm no, I mean really serious. Yeah. And you're ready to commit and commit to the time of it. Because if you're not, then it's kind of pointless. It's just going to command a lot of your time. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Are you just as passionate now as you were when you heard that when Bruce brought you over? I don't think so. To, I don't know. think so because I've gotten older and a lot of life things have come in and taken precedence and forced me to kind of deal with them as well. But my passion and my love for it is, is never going to die. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's gotten worse. It's, that that is heightened okay. for sure. But at that time, you know, I had I didn't have the responsibilities. I was a kid. You know, all my time and all my focus could be on that. Yeah, you know, well, you did you that. Just we don't you, have yeah. it. Yeah, now you just the yeah, time. I mean, you got it's not a lot, a lot of stuff competing I have, with your I time. Have four children, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna talk about that too. Yeah. Anyway, man, man, I learned a lot about you, man. Absolutely. Through this this uh, um, first part, man, and I appreciate. Uh, it. We're gonna talk about you as an educator, um, as a band leader on the sure. other side, um, and your, your company. Uh, cool. and, and some other things. Okay. All right, so we'll be right back. All right, thank All you. All right, you've been listening to Mr. Howard Kingfish Franklin. This is a conversation in jazz. Thank you. And we'll be right back.